Thanks so much for coming back for this segment of the Bath Vanity Series. As you can see, I got the finish put on all of the raised panels for the doors and the drawer fronts, and really they came out looking beautiful. So now it's time to glue up those cope and stick rails and styles and finish making the doors and the drawer fronts. Then after that, we're going to jump right in to making the drawer boxes themselves. So let's get going. The first assembly that I'm going to glue up is the long false drawer front that goes right under the sink area and above the two large cabinet doors. This was by far the hardest piece to mill for the raised panel, so I figured I would go ahead and glue this up just to get it out of the way. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a brush and we're going to apply the glue just here on the coped ends of these rail pieces. The styles we're not going to fool with because it would be very easy to slop glue over onto the area that we don't want it to show. And we'll get enough glue in there that when we put this together it'll hang real good. And remember we don't want to get any glue on this panel because we need area for it to expand and contract. If a little glue gets on it, it probably won't stick because of all this finish on here, but we want to be careful and not get any on there if we can help it. Then after that, after that dries, all I got to do is sand the rails and styles and start applying finish to those. So let's get going. All right, I've got a little glue here in a paper bowl and I've got a brush. This is an angled brush I picked up for real cheap at a hobby supply store, but the angle makes it really easy to get in and uh, get the glue in. And you can wash these and reuse them many, many times. Now I'm using Tight Bond 3. I would have liked to have used Tight Bond 2 because it takes a little longer for it to set up. But I figured because it's a bath vanity and moisture and water and blah, 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 I should probably use Type on 3. So I'm going to have to work a little faster than what I would actually prefer to do, but that's okay. And what we want to do is we want to carefully get the glue in here. We want to make sure we get enough not to starve the joint, but we also don't want to get a whole lot of squeeze out. And unlike some of my other glue ups, if I get any squeeze out, I'm going to take that off right away while the glue is wet um, because I don't want to be scraping on this after it's put together. I'm going to put glue on both ends. And then I'm going to get glue on the other rail. You want to make sure you get all of the mating surfaces covered. Now, you may be wondering why I didn't go ahead and finish this. I find it easier, at least for me, to do the final finishing after the thing is put together. There is also, since I use shellac, to pop the grain and give a little color to this maple. There is also the possibility of doing some really small color adjustments uh, once the thing is together and I can see it with the rest of the, uh, of the piece. So we're almost ready now to assemble. I'll make sure I get the uh, little stub tenon here covered good. And I think uh, judging by what I'm seeing, we will get a little squeeze out, but that's okay. We will work with that. Okay, and by the way, I did go ahead and sand the profile part. 
which is the part that comes into contact with the panel that's already sanded and ready to go. So now what I like to do is I like to stand this up and push this together and that way I make sure I get the ends of the joint flush. I want to get these ends down here flush. That way I'm not wrestling with it. Then I'll just slide the panel in. Get that into position. And then I'll have to spread this just a little bit and I can slip this in. And then all I got to worry about is getting this lined up and flush at the top. And that looks pretty good. And that's all there is to it. Actually, I didn't have any squeeze out on the face. I do have a little bit on the back side I can feel, but I'll worry about that part later. I just wanted to make sure I didn't get any on the face here. And that looks pretty good. And if you're wondering, by the way, after everything is done, I, right before I put on final finish, I will do a slight round over on the four edges of this, very slight round over, just to break that sharp edge. But there we go, easy peasy. Well, I've got all of the doors and all of the drawer fronts glued up, and man, this is starting to look really good. I've done a little bit of sanding, but I don't have any finish on the maple rails and styles yet. It's really going to pop then. But we've got something we need to do first, and that's to drill the cup holes in the doors for the hinges. I want to do that, obviously, before we put the finish on, because you've got to do it upside down, and you could easily mar the finish on the other side. The jig will do all of the work for us. We just have to get it in position. Let's take a look at how we're going to do that. All right, now what we've got here is the Hetich, I hope I'm saying that right, guide for drilling the cup holes for the European style hinges. And there are three drill bits. There is a uh, Forstner style bit that drills the cup, and then there are two drills that drill the pilot holes for the screws for the cup hinge. There's also settings here to set the offset from the edge. I have this set on two on both, which is giving me the offset that I want. And then there's a center line milled into the metal here on the jig where you can make your mark. Now I want these center of the hinges two inches from the top and two inches from the bottom on these small doors. As it turns out, my rails and styles are two inches wide, so I'm just going to actually use the rail as my mark. But I've got to um, put a scrap of wood in here and line it up because the guide is off the end with only two inches down. The guide is off the end, so I'm just basically extending this piece of wood a little bit. clamping that in, and then we'll be able to uh, register off that. So I've got that clamped even with the end of the style, and now I can put this on. I'll line up the groove in the metal casting with the edge of the rail and tighten down the clamp. Once the clamp is tightened down, I've got to look over the top of my glasses to see up close. Once the clamp is tightened down, now we can drill. Now there are um, inside, basically like an Allen wrench type hexagons 
inside here. They may be octagons, but um, I've got a little driver and it fits in there. And when you put it in, it turns the drill. So this is the way it works. Driving that big hole into that maple is not the easiest thing in the world. The little pilot holes are real easy. Now, the only drawback to this jig is you get a great hole and you get your pilot holes and everything is positioned well, but the whole underside of this thing gets pretty full of chips and there's really no way to get them out except to reach in there and take them out. All right, so now I need to move my little extension board to the other side. Basically just want to line up this end down here so there's a registration point for the jig. Tighten that up. Clamp it down. Ready to drill. Okay, this bit is actually real hard, but inside you will occasionally get some cam out. And all you really need to do is order a package of these screws. I got these, um, they're M8 by an inch and a quarter by 16 millimeter. And I got this whole package, which has to be probably, I don't even know how many is in here, 25 of them for a couple of bucks. And that will replace these screws when they cam out. So you can keep using the jig. Also, the uh, Forstner bit, this is getting a little dull. And uh, it needs to be either sharpened or changed out. I do have a replacement Forstner bit. I just haven't changed it out. And I don't have that many do doors to do right now. So I'll change it out next time. <laughs> Procrastination. When you got a lot of projects going, sometimes that just happens. <laughs> okay, so that's what our holes look like. That's how easy it is to do. You just got to be careful to lay it out in exactly the right place. And then you're, uh, you're good to go. All right, it's time to put on the finish. And I've gotten started here, so let me explain what I'm doing. I am starting with the backs of the doors and the drawer fronts, and I'll explain that in just a minute. Now, earlier I mentioned that I sanded the profile and edges that meet up with the raised panel before gluing up these components. And that's really a good idea to do that because then once everything's glued together, you can sand the flat parts of the rails and styles really quickly. So I went right through this front and back and sanded everything up through 220 grit. I like to go to 220 on hard maple because it seems to turn out pretty good. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting on shellac. And the reason I'm putting on shellac first is because I want to darken the maple a little bit and sort of pop the grain, make it more visible. Now I've got one coat on there and hopefully you can see this is a piece of the same material. In fact, this is one of our test pieces we used. And hopefully you can see that the color is starting to darken already. Now I'm probably going to go at least two more coats with the shellac and darken it up some more. And hopefully you can kind of see what that's looking like. Now why am I spending so much time doing the backs? Well, a couple of reasons. Hey, first of all, I'd kind of like the doors to look decent when you open them. But more importantly, a bathroom is an environment where the humidity can change quite dramatically and quite rapidly. And I want to do everything possible to protect these components from those humidity changes. So I'm going to spend just as much time finishing the back sides of everything as I do the front. All right, now shellac can kind of give people difficulty sometimes. Let's go take a look at how I mix and apply the shellac and hopefully 
you can pick up some, uh, some tips from that and maybe give shellac a try yourself. All right, I'm over here at my shop desk, my sort of utility bench. I use it for all kinds of things. But this is where I've been mixing and prepping my shellac for doing the finishing. This is the mixture of shellac that I'm using. I've got it just in a mason jar here. I mixed up a pretty large quantity, and you really want to do that if you're mixing two or three different color of shellac flakes or even adding dye. Because if you were to run out during a project, it's really, really hard to duplicate the mix and match the color. Now, I did write down the formula of the weights of the various things that I put into this mixture just in case, but hopefully I'll have plenty. Now, this is a pretty heavy cut. This is a three pound cut of shellac. And it's made up of these blonde shellac flakes and these garnet shellac flakes. These are really nice shellac flakes, by the way. I got these from Highland Woodworking, and the quality is really nice. By the way, the difference between a blonde or super blonde and a garnet, or the darkest and lightest color, is just the amount of refining that's been done to the flakes. As a result, these darker flakes will have some impurities that will settle out in your shellac. And you'll be able to see that. You won't be able to see it on the camera, but you'll be able to see that when you mix it up. Don't worry about that because it's always going to go right straight to the bottom and if you use just a little bit of care, you won't get it on your project. Okay, I start with a three pound cut and I always filter my shellac before I use it. So I pour it in, filter it, just use it on a disposable paper bowl here. Put your gloves on and then use your torn piece of t-shirt material. Fold it up or wad it up, whatever you want to do, and then just wipe it on. The trick to shellac is, is that alcohol dissolves shellac. And as testament to that, this is a brush that I was using to put some shellac on in a certain area, and I forgot to clean it, and it dried just as hard as a rock. And all I did last night was I put a little bit of alcohol in this bowl, and I dropped the brush in there, and it's just like brand new today. It dissolved every bit of the shellac. But that creates a little bit of a problem when applying the finish. When you rag on the first coat, you put it on pretty heavy, you sand it, then you go to put on the second coat, and if you don't move fast, your second coat will start to dissolve the first coat. And that's where the rag will start to drag, and you'll start to get streaks. So I figured out, for me at least, the way around that. I put on my first coat full strength, then my second coat, I put it in to the bowl, and I dilute it a little bit with a little additional alcohol. Then on the third coat, I'll dilute it even a little bit more. Eventually, I'll get down to about a two pound or even a little bit lighter cut for the final coat of the shellac. And with each coat being lighter, I can put it on quicker, and that way I don't dissolve the coat that's on underneath it. And that may be completely backwards, but it seems to work for me. So let's take a look at how this all goes on. I'm going to move the camera in a little bit closer so you can see what's going on here. The first thing to do is to use an ultra fine mesh filter and pour your shellac through that. There will be some small sediment that gets caught in the filter and I always put my shellac back and keep whatever's left over and I pour it right back through the filter again in case the shellac has picked up any lint off of my cloth or any stray specks of sawdust as I'm applying it to the wood. I've got my uh, little piece of t-shirt material here and I fold mine with no seams, nice and smooth, and then just dip it right into the shellac. 
And the first time that I do it, I like to get it kind of soaked a little bit so it's nice and wet. And then I just rake it on the side of the bowl there and apply it. And all you got to do is just make nice smooth strokes and you won't get any streaks in your wood. Now I'm applying this the full strength to this test board. This is the full three pound cut of the shellac and I'm putting it on this test board that I'm going to use to gauge the color as I go forward. When you get into these profile areas the nice thing about the rag is is you can really get into those areas easily. Now you could brush this on that's fine too. I just find the rag is a lot easier and frankly I just rather throw away the little piece of rag and not have to worry about cleaning brushes if I don't have to. That's all there is to it really. That will dry rather rapidly then sand it and you're ready for the next coat. Alright I've got a test board here. This section here has got one coat of shellac. This has got a second coat and I've just put a third coat on this section here. And this is my control board. It has nothing on it. It's just bare. It's been sanded however. And you can see how it's starting to pick up color and more importantly notice how the grain is starting to pop out there on this maple. Now I may stop at three coats because I don't want to add a whole lot of color. I still want this to be light. But I'm going to top coat this with this product. And uh, this is made by General Finishes. It's called Armor Seal. And I'm going to use the satin. This is a very nice hard coat that you can put on. Great for this type of project. And you can wipe that on, rag that on, just like we're ragging on the shellac. It goes on beautifully. Well, I've got the finishing well underway and now it's time to make the drawer boxes. Now I found this soft maple out in my storage barn. It's already been milled on three sides and it looks pretty nice and it's still nice and flat. It's been out there for quite a while. The problem is is that this piece is like an inch and three sixteenths and this piece is an inch and three quarters and I want to make my drawer sides a half an inch thick which means I've got to get two pieces out of this piece of lumber and three pieces out of this one. That's going to take some pretty careful and pretty exact resawing. But I'm going to get to work on that and if I pull it off I should have enough to do this. In our next video we're going to wrap up this series on the bath vanity by building these drawer boxes and we're going to put dovetail joints in the corners and I'm really excited because I'm going to use my new Lee D4R Pro jig. I have not used it I just got it so we're going to kind of learn together how that works. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and really appreciate you watching this one.